Hiyo ni si hapa. Bora bakana. Eh, iko sawa. Haya. Haya. Abandu babi ntombo ya mure. Bwe mure na ende. Asante ni sana. This is a very moving moment. What my brother, younger brother Fred has done. And uh, I want to appreciate him. But before I do so, I want to make some few remarks. First, I'm very grateful to be here today. And I always feel very much at home here. Because these are my people. They always vote for me. So and, uh, we know where we've come from. There's a story which Chris Obore uh, talked about, where we are here in Borabu. For those who are not there, this was there's a lot of uh, very heavy contestation about Borabu. Because as you know, once upon a time, Nyanza started from Mount Elgon to Kilgoris. But 1963, because of Majimbo boundary, Nyanza was dismembered. Uh, North Nyanza became what is now today Western Province because they were in Kadu. Kericho was part of then Greater South Nyanza uh, District, headquarters Kisi Town. Then later on, Kericho became a district, but in Nyanza. But in 1963, because they were in Kadu, they were being moved from Nyanza to the Rift Valley. And the border became contentious because, and this is the border, this was a settlement area. And they insisted that the whole tea plantation should go with the carriage on that side. If you read the 1963 Boundary Commission report, you'll find that. Jaramogi said, no, this must remain in Nyanza. And he was telling us later that they walked on foot up to the, where the border is today. And that he had foreseen that the Kisi was becoming so crowded down there, needed a, a, a place to overflow. And that's why they insisted that Borabu must remain in Nyanza. And that's why it is Nyanza. <laughs> the reason that the Luos and Kisis and Koreas were remaining in Nyanza because they were in Kanu. If Kisi had been in Kadu, they would have gone to the Rift Valley. That was the, the, the how they were manipulating the, the, the boundary at that time. So you come from very far, and there's a lot that is shared in common here. So I, I feel very, very happy to be back here, to talk to my people here, and uh, to listen to my younger brother, Fred. Fred is a very intelligent and very hardworking person. <laughs> he was teaching at Egerton University, but he was also doing consultancy, and was actually coming to Parliament to run courses for members of Parliament. That's where we met for the first time. And he has continued to be very dedicated, even as a minister. And I know that President Uhuru Kenyatta has a lot of faith in Fred Matiang. So there were times when we were talking here, and I had discussions even with the my uh, younger, my younger brother there, Mr. Onyonka, and Mimi Lisema, Mimi Najua Mambu Yamatiang. 
We discussed with him how he, things should be. And at one time I said, I'm ready to support Fred Matiang. <laughs> but when we later on look, do, did a review and look at how the forest was looking like, then he, he, he agreed, he told me, you should actually finish, go, go into this forest first. Mayana na hii nyangawe kwanza. But we are, we are together. Every step that we have taken, we have taken after consultations. And, and uh, that's why when he was coming to make this major statement, he asked me to come. But I didn't know what he was going to say. But I'm very happy that he said it here. We, he believes in Kenya, not just in Nyanza, just like myself. When we wanted to do a meeting here for Nyanza people in Sikri, it happened, it actually coincided with the day when the, the president had just extended the curfew. We were in Mombasa together with uh, Fred and uh, my brother here, Mutahi Kagwe. So the issue was now how they said you should have told us we should have extended this by one more day. But now the, the, the curfew had been extended. The question was now, should you hold a secret meeting or not? They told him a lot of preparation has gone on a secret meeting. So let me just go there to tell the meeting, people that the meeting is now not going to continue as a formal meeting. And they allowed me. And the president actually also allowed me. That's why I came and we had the secret meeting. Then uh, um, we went to, after that we did not have any more meetings. Until later, when it was possible to do, I went to Nakuru and uh, I launched what they call Azimio La Umoja. That means a, de a declaration of unity of the people of Kenya. That we want to unite all the people of Kenya and become one as the founding fathers of our nation wanted, which you find in our national anthem. By Nasema, Lord bless this land of ours, justice be our shield and defender, may we dwell in unity, peace and liberty, plenty be found within our borders. But may we dwell in unity, Kenya has been torn along ethnic lines. There's a lot of hatred and a lot of tension on the surface in Wanacheka. But down there, the deep down there, they are rooted in ethnicity. When a young man goes to do an interview and is highly qualified, he faces a panel of, of, of uh, interviewers. The moment he or she men mentions the name, that panel already knows that, oh, we are Naribu Wakatiaki. They know that this is, job is not for this person. So you are denied or given a job on the basis of your ethnicity, not on the basis of your qualification. This you must end. So that merit becomes the basis of appointment and promotion in civil service. This is doable, but it's not doable when you have got people who believe in what you believe in. And that's why I'm saying we are going to work together. We need to unite the people of the country because this country has got a big, a great potential.